Hello, today we'll be covering an introduction to Subscription Watch. Subscription Watch was built because subscription tracking in general took roughly about 10 hours a week from a user's time leveraging Red Hat products and solutions. Based upon a survey that was taken at Red Hat Summit in 2019, we interviewed a number of customers and we, we asked them, we said, hey guys, how much time are you spending doing subscription related tasks, whether that's counting up subscriptions to execute a financial transaction or working with our subscription tools or understanding what the subscription provided. And we got a whole bunch of feedback from it, but when we laid it into kind of three course categories, these were the three. It was time consuming, overly complex, right? Some parts of subscription management are necessarily complex, but there are some areas where it's also overly complex. And then it was a business impacting. So if you think about it from the perspective of uh, you know, the penalty for getting it wrong, the penalty for getting subscription management wrong generally means that you can't deploy a system, you can't patch a system, you cannot otherwise support your business. So Subscription Watch was created to give our users a cloud-based reporting dashboard to give them account-wide subscription utilization. And when we say account-wide, that means anywhere where Red Hat products are deployed, Subscription Watch can show you their utilization. So whether those are on-premise systems, systems registered to a satellite server, systems registered to our customer portal or running in the cloud, we can bring all of that inventory information into a cloud-based platform and show your utilization of a particular Red Hat product line. The intent of Subscription Watch is to make it easy to perform self-governance, to show you trending and alerting so you can decide what to do in the future based upon what's happened in the past and also just be able to just keep track of everything that's going on. In this example, we're showing Red Hat Enterprise Linux uh, for IBM Power. Uh, we're showing a chart of uh, this particular account's usage of that particular uh, product line. So in this example, we show roughly 40 sockets worth of IBM Power that's calculated daily based upon the subscriptions that are in the account. So in this account, regardless of the SKUs that are in play, there are roughly 40 sockets worth of IBM power for RHEL that is provided by the subscriptions. And then beneath that, we chart on a daily basis the, uh, the RHEL that is being used, or the product in this case is being used, uh, and how much of it is being used. We tally it up and we visualize it, and obviously we show it over time. So in the case of a product like RHEL, which is generally uh, measured in a socket pair uh, kind of unit of measure, We'll measure that out on a daily, uh, on a daily basis by socket. Uh, some other products such as OpenShift, which can be either core based or uh, socket based, will have a, a unit switcher to show you, uh, you know, the usage based upon that particular unit of measure. The key point here is that now that we've abstracted away the, uh, the account wide view, you now can see, you know, based upon your subscription threshold, is it time to you know, purchase uh, additional subscriptions? Uh, you know, conversely, if you see low utilization, uh, you know, it's worth investigating why you know, we're purchasing something and we're not using it. The other portion of our portfolio is a capability called Simple Content Access. Simple Content Access is to, uh, to streamline the experience when using Red Hat products. So traditionally, we think in the RHEL subscription space, uh, when you build a RHEL system, you build it, you register it to our customer portal or satellite, you do a complex set of uh, setup to ensure that it has the correct subscription, and then if you get all that right, you enable the repositories and you uh, install the software that you need to install. In the mode of simple content access, there is no longer the requirement to attach an entitlement to a system in order to get access to content. So simple content access makes it easy. Register the system, enable the repositories, install the products you want. Now with that being said, simple content access does include uh, some, uh, some control capabilities by means of activation keys, which are generally used when registering systems. You can also leverage them to limit the number of systems that can be registered with an activation key. So using simple content access gives you a better streamlined tooling experience in conjunction with some uh, subscription watch, it gives you a governance experience that's good as well. So from our perspective of subscription management experience team, we look at subscription management through the lens of three personas, 
right? First persona is our architect persona. This person wants to support the business. They want to uh, deploy the applications that needed to be deployed as easily and simply as possible, wherever it makes the most sense for the business. So for the architect, we want to give them the confidence that wherever they deploy Red Hat technology, whether it makes sense to deploy it on-premise and one of the many public cloud providers that Red Hat supports, we can count it while it's there and it'll be easy to use. For the operations folks, right, we want to get them out of the business of doing subscription management and let them focus on workload management. That's what they do. That's what they're great at. So let's get them out of the business of having a complex tooling experience, make it easier to use the tools and support the workloads. And the last persona we look at is the procurement persona. We want to be able to give that person account-wide visibility so that they can see the subscriptions that are in use. And, uh, and align those to various lines of business. So rich tagging systems are the types of things that we want to use so people can keep track of uh, subscriptions at an account-wide level. From a setup perspective, setting up simple content access and subscription watch is basically a three-step process. First and foremost, you enable uh, simple content access in satellite if you're using a satellite server. You then configure one or more reporting tools to upload inventory to subscription watch. So those would be either use insights, use uh, satellite, because satellite has an inventory upload plugin, uh, or use a uh, tool such as Red Hat Discovery. And then for hosted tools such as OCM or Red Hat Subscription Management, you don't have to do any work if you're using those. We all automatically bring those into subscription watch. Since Red Hat owns both properties, we can build that integration. Resources that are available to get subscription watch up and running. First and foremost, we have a subscription watch helper wizard, which is a, uh, an Access Labs wizard available on the customer portal. This kind of walks you through a couple of basic yes, no questions so that you can understand what parts of uh, subscription watch you can use, how you need to get it set up. Great example of this is if you're a satellite user and you're using subscriptions that are tied to the hypervisor, there you have to use the satellite uh, plugin in order to uh, in order to upload host guest information. The second resource that we have is a new resource called Subscription Central. Subscription Central is a new location on our customer portal where we're centralizing cross-product subscription documentation. The next uh, resource that we have is a longer version of this webinar that's available on YouTube. So it kind of goes into the background uh, of around why we built Subscription Watch, uh, additionally into uh, exactly where in your user experience does your experience change with subscription watches in play. The last thing on the, on the page is from a transparency perspective, uh, we want to let you know what data that we're capturing for subscription watch, why we're capturing it, how we use it, and how we are responsible with that data. So those are resources that can get you set up real quick on subscription watch. So because of the subscription space can be somewhat complex and uh, varied in, in many cases, we want to do some disambiguation about what Subscription Watch is and what it isn't. Subscription Watch at its core is a cloud-based tool that lets you see your utilization of both on-premise and off-premise uh, workloads. It's focused on data analytics and setup. And we want to get you set up super fast, which again, if you're leveraging insights, you can use Subscription Watch out of the box. If you're using satellite, you can have a simple plugin to get you up and running. What Subscription Watch is not, it's not a billing dashboard. Red Hat has no intent of generating invoices based upon Subscription Watch data. Uh, it is also not an on-demand purchasing program. Simple content access, again, we wanna do the disambiguation. It's a tool to let you use the stuff that you've already purchased, right? Doesn't give you access to things that you haven't already purchased. It's currently available for satellite version 6.3 and newer. Uh, we're looking to make it available for RHSM uh, later on this year. And it does have governance, right? So a lot of times folks are like, oh, you make it easy for people to use stuff. It means you make it easy for people to use too much stuff. That's not true. There's governance capabilities built in the simple content access as well. And again, things that it's not, it's not an all you can eat contract. It doesn't give you access to things you haven't purchased. That is, if you're a RHEL and an OpenShift user, and you've never purchased, say, Red Hat storage, you don't automatically get access to uh, a Red Hat storage. From the security perspective, right, folks, uh, especially when leveraging SaaS-based services, they want to ensure that the data that's leaving their data center is minimal and that the people who they give it to are responsible. 
And from a uh, payload perspective, subscription watch requires a very small payload. Uh, if you think about uh, an SOS report being, uh, you know, 30 to 40 megs, the Insights payload is maybe like 200K, right? An order of magnitude smaller, if not two order of magnitude smaller. From subscriptions watch perspective, we need even less data than that. The key things that we need to identify a system, a way to uniquely identify it, what's installed on it, uh, is it running any guests, and how big is it? For, uh, for data security, uh, all of our data is encrypted in transit and at rest uh, within cloud.redhead.com. And lastly, we responsibly hold on to that data for as long as we need it and not much more. Uh, so therefore, when we haven't heard from a system uh, in a certain defined period of time, we'll purge that uh, system from, from our inventory because there's no reason to keep it around. Uh, one, it's costly to do so, and two, from a subscription perspective, we need to always represent an accurate inventory. Architecturally, Subscription Watch sits on top of cloud.redhat.com, the same shared platform that many other Red Hat services are delivered on, services such as Insights, Cloud Management Services for RHEL, OCM, and others. The key things for us is that it allows us to have a unified API, common services so that we don't have to give you a different experience depending upon what application you use. On the left hand side, there's uh, things that may need to be installed in your environment. If you're leveraging Insights, that's great. We get a lot of data from Subscription Watch from Insights. If you're a satellite user, you can use the satellite inventory uploader. And if you're not using any Red Hat management tools, we still have a third tool called Red Hat Discovery that allows you to gather inventory of systems that may not be registered to any Red Hat tool and get those uploaded in a platform so we can show you your utilization. You can use one or more of these. Many customers use more than one. Uh, we responsibly deduplicate ser uh, servers when reported on the back end anyway. Uh, so if a system is reported via both, say, Insights and the satellite inventory uploader, we ensure that it's only counted in the inventory once. So with that, thank you very much and have a good day.